So Wish.com delivers some of the most, um, let's say, interesting and cheap products that you can find really anywhere on the planet. You know, and I've spent the last couple of years testing and reviewing hardware for streaming and remote work. Now lately, I've actually been testing a lot of budget webcams and tuning them to make them look as good as possible. So I couldn't help myself when I went to Wish.com. This is actually the first time I've actually used or ordered anything from Wish. So honestly, I was a bit worried about being scammed. You know, there are lots of videos on YouTube about getting scammed on Wish. So, you know, what happens if the camera never arrives? Or even if it did arrive, maybe the specs that they published about the camera aren't actually as they are written. So what if the camera is just bad? So I went on to the Wish.com website and looked into a few more details then before gambling my precious $3 plus standard shipping. Now the first red flag was that even though it said 1080p resolution in the listing, in the size dropdown it said 480p. So I chose the 1080p size model, which increased the price by a third actually to $4. Even though that extra dollar didn't deter me, what I guess would happen was that it might be a scam in the fact that they might still just send me the $3 480p version of the camera and kind of keep that extra dollar. So then I took a closer look at the specs before taking risk of sending $4 plus 495 for standard shipping. And the specs claim 1080p, 720p, and 480p. It's a universal plug and play camera. And to be honest, I probably would never have installed any included software to run this camera, even if it was included. And otherwise, the specs look pretty normal for a USB 2.0 webcam, with the exception of YUI 2 output, we'll get back to that in a moment, and the 20 millimeter extreme focus range. So I decided to go through with it, but first found a coupon to save another 20% off my first order, which then lowered the price of the webcam now back to $3.20 plus $4.95 for shipping, or $8.15 landed to my mailbox. So that was a risk I was willing to take. Now with standard shipping, it took about two weeks and finally my $3 webcam arrived. And I really had the feeling I used to get as a kid when I'd order stuff from the back pages of old comic books like Sea Monkeys, remember those? But those used to take like six weeks to arrive and once those things did arrive, I was usually pretty disappointed because in the end, they were just brine shrimp in that case. And this is it. So the box was a little bit dented after traveling more than 6,500 miles. And the webcam inside, it's right here. Well, it looks pretty much okay. Uh, the orange and black color scheme kind of reminded me immediately of many of the tool purchases I've made from Harbor Freight, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, it did, however, come with a manual pointing out some of the various features, uh, how to use it with Skype in this case, how to set up the webcam, and a couple of things stood out for me here that we'll come back to in a second, but first really was the claim of 59.94 frames per second, which I really doubt is going to be the case. And then there's this gem, why does my software show 1280 by 720 instead of 1920 by 1080. Yikes. So you'll notice that on the front side of this picture, while it looks a little bit different from the webcam itself and says there are LEDs to indicate power and video. Sadly, those LEDs don't exist or at least they don't function. So now for the moment of truth and probably what you've been waiting for is, well, does the camera work? How does it look and how does it sound? Okay, so this is the default image and built-in microphone from my Wish.com camera. Okay, so it works, but as you can tell, it's not great. Uh, it's very overexposed. And the real question is, what can I do to make it look decent? And that's the real challenge here. So can software save this camera? Let's see what I have to work with. So I'm using a Windows machine with OBS, so I can easily access the built-in Windows UVC camera controls. And that's really where I hit the first major problem. It looks like the manufacturer did actually declare to Windows that all the controls can be set, which is why nothing's grayed out. And most cameras, by the way, do have some of these controls grayed out, but you can't actually use them. They don't actually do anything. So 
here everything appears to be configurable but they don't actually work as I slide these different sliders around. The same thing goes for the camera tab by the way except in this case the sliders don't even work. So then if I continue on in OBS let's take a look at a few more things. If I choose custom resolution you'll see the camera does indicate that it's 1920 by 1080 p um, there's also a 720p, 360p, 320p, and 480p mode. And then naturally I wondered, because the image did look pretty grainy, whether or not the image was just 720p, and it just kind of claimed to be, or looked like it was scaling itself as 1080p to the computer. So let's try that out. Nope, it does actually get a little bit worse uh, at 720p. You can kind of notice it when you zoom into stuff. You know, and all the other settings indeed are MJPEG for format, except for the 360p setting, which does, by the way, support YUI 2. Let me go back to 1080p. Now, one last thing. Remember that the kind of printout claimed that it was 59.94 frames per second on the output. Nope, that turns out to be actually 25 frames per second, which is kind of expected. Okay, so it's very close then to the very cinematic 24 frames that all the hipsters still rave about. So I wouldn't say that these spec discrepancies equate to a scam though. They're probably just, you know, a few typos. The problem is that without those UVC camera controls, there really isn't much I can do to manipulate the settings. Now, I have to go old school in terms of trying to play with lighting and just filters in OBS as opposed to those UVC settings. And beyond the image, I also want to make sure that that underwater sounding microphone will sound okay as well, whether I'm streaming or on calls. There is a big problem there though too. So the field of view for the camera, I'm guessing, is around 60 degrees. So it needs to be about three to four feet away from my mouth. And that's not what you want from anything shy of, say, a shotgun microphone. So let's get to work starting with the image. And the only option I have here is OBS filters. So another major problem is that the image is way overexposed and because of the low light performance and it's so bad, I can't really dim the lights at all or else I just get a lot more graininess. So I had to get creative like my childhood hero MacGyver to figure something else out because setting gamma, contrast, and brightness didn't really help in terms of the overexposure spots. So I did these three things. So first, I changed into a light colored shirt, as you can see here, to really trick the auto exposure in order to darken the image. Now, here it is again with the black shirt, and now back to this one. Second, I changed the color multiply setting to make the standard 6F kind of hex pure white tone a little closer to something in the natural skin tone range just a little bit beige, and then to darken the image, for the first time ever, I actually used the opacity control because by default, the color behind the video mat is actually black. This means that you've got super granular adjustment for darkness, but it means that if you do decide to put use this method and basically put it on top of, say, your stream or any other video, you're gonna need to put a black mat behind it and kind of overlay that on top of the black mat. Then, in order to compensate a little bit for the beige tones, I moved hue shift a little bit more to the red spectrum I kept the saturation, the brightness, the contrast, and the gamma pretty close to the default settings. Then I enabled sharpen and kept it pretty low at about 0 0.10. Of course, since I made it this far, I thought I might as well put it through NVIDIA Broadcast and enable both background blur for that sweet bokeh effect that you can see behind me, and some video noise removal just to remove some of the graininess, and also add that soft skin effect to make me look 10 years younger. Okay, so now we're talking. The image is starting to get decent for a $3.20 webcam, but I still had the problem of taking care of the sound. So I've kind of been spoiling you until now with the sound of the Shure MV7 microphone. But this is what the Wishcam actually sounds like. So let's take care of that too. So first, you're probably hearing a bit of noise from the microphone. So we're gonna need a noise compressor. And I used NVIDIA Broadcast for this. So I'll go ahead and enable it here. And I also used room echo removal. And then once I got those settings, the, I noticed that the audio was pretty darn muddy. So the way to do that was to add some top end brightness to it. 
All right, so then I went all out and you can see that in addition to the NVIDIA broadcast uh, filters for noise removal and also room echo, I enabled a couple of things there. First, the new three band equalizer and I bumped up equalization by about 15 decibels. Now remember, each 3D bump from the previous level is a doubling in terms of loudness. Um, and I also took the mids and I bumped them up six decibels and then I took the lows and I lowered them by six decibels, which by the way, it sounds conservative on those last two, but it's actually quite a bit. So this is what it sounds like with that applied as well as the additional noise suppression in OBS. Now you might be able to get this even better, by the way, using things like voice meter or other software, but now at least the microphone sounds kind of acceptable. So, okay, so with the audio and video working, why don't we try this out in a couple of real world tests? Okay, so let's see what this looks like in Microsoft Teams. And you can see that I'm also recording the meeting. You can also see I've got my setup set to have the microphone and video broadcast because the OBS virtual camera doesn't send audio signal. I didn't realize this to Microsoft Teams, only the image. So it doesn't have uh, the equalizer filter applied to it, just the two from NVIDIA. And I've also got OBS virtual camera, which is effectively sending the image uh, into Microsoft Teams. So here's what it looks like. And I'm also recording so you can hear exactly what it sounds like from the track that participants would actually hear with the additional equalizations from Microsoft Teams for voice clarity. And I gotta say, that's not too bad. So why don't we simulate some game streaming then with a cropped image overlaid on a game. And I gotta say, it looks pretty good to me. So, all right, so my expectations were pretty low with this one, and I thought I might get scammed from Wish.com on this $4 webcam that cost me actually $3.20 and $8.15 shipped to my mailbox. But despite its terrible quality, the lack of UVC camera controls, and its bad low light performance, kind of like Richard Hammond developed a bond with his old beige Opal Cadet Oliver in Top Gear. Not by any stretch a great car, by the way. Here, I've actually grown fond of this little webcam that I've since named the Wish Cam. That said, I can't say that I'd recommend it unless you're super strapped for cash, but hopefully in making the world's cheapest webcam look and sound kind of decent, you've learned a few tips and tricks for looking good with your budget setups in your streams and also your online meetings. And that, by the way, is really the point here. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button or subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you soon.